In this video, I want to show you how to install Kali Linux on a laptop or a PC step by step. You need four things to achieve this. First, you need the Kali installer image, 64-bit or 32-bit. Second, you need a utility to flash the image to a USB drive. You can use Rufus, Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager or any other utility if you have one. You need the USB key that is 8GB or more. Of course, you need the laptop. And note please that the procedure I'm gonna show you, it will wipe the USB key and the hard disk entirely. So make sure you are using a USB key and a laptop that has a hard disk where there is no data that you want. Step 1 is to download Kali installer image from Kali.org. Open your web browser and go to Kali.org. Hover over downloads and click download Kali Linux. And here you see you have Kali Linux 64-bit installer. This is the one that we want because I have a 64-bit laptop. In case you have a 32-bit laptop, scroll down and download the Kali Linux 32-bit installer image. So click on the link to download the image. It's a pretty big image, so it will take time to download. It's 3.6 gigabyte now. This is version 2020.2 as you see. I accelerated the video here of course and this is the download finished. Step 2 is to download Rufus from Rufus.ie and flash the image to the USB key. So on your web browser go to Rufus.ie, scroll down to the middle of the page and click on Rufus 3.11 or whatever the latest version is. The file will download. This is an executable file that doesn't need installation. I'm going to open the folder where it downloaded here. And just double click Rufus to launch the program. Select yes to check for updates. So in Rufus first you need to choose the device. The device meaning the USB key. Careful here if you have many USB keys because it will be completely white. Then click on select and select the Kali image that you just downloaded before and click on open. The other options, I'm gonna keep them by default but I'm gonna explain them quickly. I'm gonna keep MBR so that the USB key will be compatible with older and newer laptops. For the volume label I'm gonna keep it as it is and the other options also by default. So click on start. Here it will prompt you to download something, it will do it automatically, just click on yes. And for the image format on the USB key, I'm gonna keep it on ISO, click OK. And here also it will give you a warning about destroying all the data on the USB key, click on yes. And it will start. It will take approximately 10 minutes. Here of course I accelerated the video. And once it is finished, you can close Rufus. And here step 3 is to start the laptop from the USB key we just imaged and install Kali. So this is a laptop I'm gonna be using. Insert the USB key in the laptop and start the laptop. When the laptop starts, press the hot key that takes you to the boot menu. This is a Dell laptop so I pressed F12. You can find a list of boot hotkeys in the description for popular laptop models. Choose USB device and press enter. It will take you to the Kali installation. Choose graphical install, press enter. It will start the installation. Just ignore these errors. So the installation continues and here it will ask you which language you want for the installation. Here we have English, so press continue. United States for the country, continue or choose your own country of course. And for the keyboard, I chose English US because this is the keyboard that I have. Choose the keyboard you have and press continue. The installation wizard continues. Here it's detecting and mounting the installation media. This first step of the installation is to detect the installation media and the network card. So here it's still loading the installer components and here it's detecting the network hardware. So now when it detects the network hardware, 
there might be a chance that it cannot detect correctly your wireless LAN. So I have a workaround for this. Here it's detecting the network hardware. It detected my LAN, my physical network, which is a gigabyte network, and wireless LAN. So if I choose the wireless LAN, as you see here, it gave me an error. To work around this, you need to do the following. Hook your laptop to a physical network connection. And here I'm doing this. So this is the RG45 physical network connection. And this step is only for the setup. Afterwards, when it finishes the setup, it will download by itself the installation for the network card, the Wi-Fi card. So click on go back and click detect network hardware once again and click continue. So now it will detect once again the network hardware, but this time it will give you an error. As you're gonna see, choose no, and then press on continue. And here choose your physical connection and not the wireless one. So as I said, it will detect the physical connection and it will download the drivers for the wireless LAN. When you start Kali, it will work for the Wi-Fi. Here it gives you the option to choose your host name. I'm going to change the default name from Kali to KST Kali. Press continue. Domain name here also, if you're installing Kali on your home network, just put any domain name. I've put here kst.com for me. And press on continue. It will ask you here to create a user. So this is a user that is different than the root account, which is an administrator account, the root account. Here it's asking you to create a non-administrative account. So put the full name for the user. Here I'm putting KST user for the full name. And I am keeping the same thing for the login name also. When you press on continue, it will prompt you to choose a password. So choose the password you want. And confirm it and press continue. And here it will detect your time zone. If it doesn't detect it correctly, just choose it and click on continue. And the following steps is to configure the hard disk. So here I'm choosing guided use entire disk. And press continue. Here be careful to choose the correct hard disk. And once again, the hard disk, it will be completely wiped. So please make sure you are using a hard disk that you don't need the data on. I just pressed continue twice. And here it's asking me if I want to write the changes to the disk. Continue. And once again, it's giving me a warning about the hard disk. So I'm going to choose yes, because I'm sure I want to wipe my hard disk here. And I will press on continue. It will finish the partitioning of the disks. And it's starting installing the base system. When it finishes installing the base system, it needs to connect to the internet. If you have a proxy, just put it here. I didn't have a proxy, so I just pressed on continue. And here it gives you options to install additional software. I'm going to choose the large option here to install all the packages for Kali Linux. It takes time, this option. So as you see, it has 2440 packages to install. Just follow the prompts and press continue. Here, choose your hard disk and press continue to install Grub on it. And now it's finishing the installation. At this stage, you should remove the USB key from the laptop and press continue to restart it. And now it will restart from the hard disk and the laptop for the first time.
So this is Kali Linux starting. You can wait for it here. It takes a couple of seconds to start. And when it starts, it will prompt you to log in using your username that you created earlier. So KST user I created, of course, use the username that you created. And here first, I'm going to show you how the Wi-Fi will work. Here it's still connected physically, as you see. So now it already detected the Wi-Fi. So I remove the cable, as you see, and you'll see in a second that it will show me disconnected. So this is a physical cable. And here I'm going to simply choose my wireless network. And put the password for the network. And as you see, it is connected. The next thing that you should do is to change the root password. So open the terminal and key in sudo password root here you should put your own password and then put the new password for the root account this is a good security measure to do because otherwise the root password will be root on the reverse which is Tor and the last step to do is to find if there are updates or upgrades to do. So open a terminal window and key in sudo apt update, the first one. And here it didn't find any updates. And the second command is sudo apt upgrade. And it also didn't find any upgrade. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up.